gamers, this is Flamin Gaming 7 and welcome to the first official LEGO Minecraft World Tour slash update video. This is the third edition for the Minecraft world and it is by far the best and most detailed and it's had the most thought into it and whatnot. I'll get into that in a moment because this video is going to be structured in three different parts. I'm going to give you a brief overview and history of the LEGO Minecraft world and whatnot. Just for those who don't know it, I just want to get this out out of the way and just make sure everyone knows it because this is the first full-on proper world tour that I'm doing crazy enough despite how long I've been building the world for and how long I've been doing YouTube for. Uh, then the majority of the video is going to be actually touring what I currently have and then after that I'm going to briefly talk about my plans for the, the next thing that I'm going to work on in the world. So first, a uh, brief history. Several, several years ago, like not too many less than 10 now that I think about it, uh, I don't know the exact date, I might find that out and put it on screen, but I did get three LEGO Minecraft sets for Christmas one year. Those would be the farm, the first night, and the mine, and from there I just combined them into a world, got a bunch more sets, and just kept building stuff. It definitely wasn't the best thing in the world, but I was just a kid and I was having fun and that was all that mattered. Then. One day we moved into a new house, that would be this one we're currently in, and I don't really want to talk about the specifics, but long story short, I was an attention-seeking little bitch, and I, for blah blah reasons that I made up, did not do anything with LEGO for several years. And then in the summer of 2021, I finally got back into it, and I started the LEGO Minecraft world over again. And I just had a bit of a better understanding of Minecraft at this point, and I cared a little bit more about the things I put effort into, and I was, I honestly think I was better at building then, even though I hadn't practiced for years, just because I was a lot older and a lot smarter, and I wasn't just randomly putting pieces together. But even still, something just didn't feel as polished about it as I would have liked. So last summer, when I moved into this here, my new LEGO room, uh, I had to take the LEGO Minecraft world not fully apart. And I should mention that when we had to, when we moved houses during, not even when we moved houses, but during the time where I, we actually moved the LEGO Minecraft world over to the new house totally intact. But then it got totally broken apart at some point while I wasn't building LEGO. Oh. Uh, but when we had to move the LEGO Minecraft world up here, I had to kind of take it apart in like sections because the tables, we could get them upstairs and we could get them down the hallway right outside my door, but we couldn't turn it around a corner to get into our door without turning my door. This, it's, there's no R. I mean, I guess Rachel's sitting right here. You can't see her, but it's me and Rachel's room. Rachel hangs out in here a lot lately. Basically, you had to turn the table sideways to get them in here. So obviously we had to, I had to take apart the Lego Minecraft world in sections and put it on all the tables around me. So it was kind of broken apart. So I was not starting from scratch like I was the second time, but I was starting from what was largely a sort of blank-ish slate. This time around, however, I decided I wanted to put a lot more thought into it. What I was doing in the past was just using a lot of what LEGO had already done, and LEGO does great stuff in their sets. I like their tree designs and their flower designs and all that, but I wanted to be more game accurate, not to like cheesy studios level, but I did want to be more game accurate. And more than that, I wanted to, it to be more my own style. And I think I very much started to show that for really the first time in this third rendition of the Lego Minecraft world. Originally, the goal was to get every Lego Minecraft set, but I definitely moved away from that. There was a small point in time for like a week, uh, the Christmas, that was like right after I moved into this house, before I stopped building with Lego. I got the Ocean Monument and maybe a couple other Minecraft sets, and for a week until the next wave released, I had all the Lego Minecraft sets. So I'm glad I hit that goal for a small period of time, but it's just not really a good idea. It just takes up too much space. It's more the space I'm worried about, not the money. Of course, I don't mind not spending like hundreds of dollars on like a Minecraft sets a year. <laughs> it's a lot more reasonable this way, but also it's just reasonable with space limitations and it allows me to have more room for my own custom stuff. The way I'm going about it is the world is split into six sections, one for each table. We have the ocean and swamp, the farming village and plains, the mountain cave, the village and trading center, the jungle, and the nether. The one I've been working on for about a year now, I guess, and I'll be showing you today is the village slash trading center. Now, I wanna know one more quick thing. This section is not done. There is no done or finished with the LEGO Minecraft world. There is 
very good for now and at a point where I'm satisfied with, but I will go back over time and change things and add things. However, that's annoying to say. So we're gonna say that this section is done, even though it is not, there is no being done, but it's as close as it's really going to get. So I think without further ado, let's get into this tour. Now I want you to take a look at how this section of the world looked like last year when I first moved into this room and what it looks like now. A major improvement, wouldn't you say? The rest of the world still hasn't gotten that treatment yet, it's just various bits of terrain and sets scattered about from the second edition, but don't worry, it will get that treatment soon enough and it will end up looking rather awesome when that time comes. Now, originally, uh, the plans I had for this section have stayed mostly the same, except originally there was going to be a bunch of jungle here and the savannah was just going to be stuck in the corner. Don't worry about this thing in my hand, by the way. I just need something to fidget with. But yeah, savannah was just stuck in the corner. It was a bunch of jungle here, maybe like the modern treehouse. No, I have been like, no, dark forest is going here because I was like, maybe I include a dark forest, maybe I don't. But no, I wanted to include a dark forest. I got this really cool idea for how to include it. It also meant we had to deal with a lot less jungle because seriously, most of this table is going to be jungle. Jungle, plus we've got some sparse jungle here. I don't want even more back here. Making room for a dark forest was a much better idea. I also like that this part of the jungle is a sparse jungle. That definitely adds a bit of variety to what will be a lot of jungle. Now, let's actually get our tour started over here in the dark forest, which I've got to admit is probably my favorite part of the world so far. I think I like it because it's totally original. The mushroom trees are sort of original designs. They're basically just bigger versions of Lego's official designs. The little woodland mansion back there is original. The dark or the dark oak trees are original. I've been really trying to, with this edition of the Lego Minecraft world, set myself apart from Lego's official designs because while they are great and I obviously make use of them and a lot of their sets, uh, I do want to make a lot more original stuff, and I really have let that shine here in the dark forest. We have a lot more elevation changes than the world usually sees. I don't know how well I'd be able to capture it, but ooh, look at that. That's a cool angle. That's cool. We got a lot of elevation changes. We've incorporated the abandoned village here, which is a Lego Minecraft set that doesn't really have... I mean, uh, you could probably tell what biome it's meant to take place in based on what kind of houses there are here, but I've totally just, just said no to all that. I'm like, no, I'm going to have it off a dark, creepy path from the main village in an abandoned, overgrown forest, which I think is super cool. I've also incorporated a woodland mansion over here, just the front of it, because woodland mansions are huge, but I did want to represent that somehow. Now, there's a couple of these, like, cobblestone walls throughout the abandoned village here, and originally those had torches on them, but while looking at the wiki, I was like, oh, torches don't actually spawn at all in abandoned villages. So, no torches then, because I want to include little details like that that make it even more game accurate. I've even made sure to only include flowers that actually spawn in the dark forest, and that's the same thing goes true for all the other biomes. I actually have my own specific designs for each flower in the game, instead of just putting random colored uh, flower pieces on various flower stems. I've just got a few small details throughout, like the little waterbed there, the cobblestone stairs, just little things you can find in actual villages that I think make it a lot more interesting. We also get the first look at this crop design, which is ripped from Cheesy Studios. However, I do like what I did with, in fact, it's a little messed up here. Let me, uh, boom, there we go. Straighten that out and I, okay, cool. The piece fell off, but basically I have little uh, vines or stems or whatever connecting to the pumpkins and I'll have the same thing if I ever make a melon farm because Lego sets don't have that I'm like uh, in game there's stems attached to these things so let me add those in real quick then back here we've got a little mountain area with some calcite on it I think I like this idea for the calcite and I'll probably do a similar thing with blocks like gravel and granite in the future where I don't detail and texture the whole block because that's way too many pieces but any blocks that are the top of them is showing, I'll then detail those with whatever pattern or whatever I think fits the block. I think that is a really great way of not overdoing the detail or the parts usage or the cost, but still having a fun, detailed, original design. And then there's a little cave back there. It's kind of hard to see. It's very hard to see, actually. House, get out of the way. There's a little cave back there with some emeralds and a couple mobs and whatnot. Moving over this way, we have the savanna and sparse jungle, which isn't super interesting. Got a little pumpkin patch, melon patch. Unfortunately, I only have the two melons. They only came in the one set. 
I don't know what they cost on Bricklink, but the, the one set was only $10 and it came with two melons, but nonetheless, I doubt they're like super cheap or anything. And I've got this little person here just leading some chickens along with seeds, and I want to include a lot of, we'll see a lot of little moments like this in the village. This is the sort of thing I want to include. Just fun little Minecrafty moments that make sense that you'd find in the game. Uh, there's not much going on in the savanna over here. Now, uh, I will say, for grass, I'm usually trying to use these, here, I'll even pick it up and show you. I'm trying to use these ones with the stud on them, I'm aware that they are more expensive because they're discontinued. However, I think it's worth it because I think the one with the stud just looks way better. Over here in the jungle, I have had to use ones with the bar hole temporarily just because I ran out of ones with the stud. However, in the savanna, those uh, stem pieces do come in olive gray, which is the accurate color they would be in game in the savanna. They only came in like one set and the piece itself is discontinued and that color of it is pretty rare and they're kind of expensive but one day i think and i might take this back but i think i'm gonna try and get all the green stems throughout the savannah here cheesy studios is a terrible influence on me but i just feel like it make it so much more game accurate uh, with the savanna and jungle trees, I will at some point come up with my own original designs for those, but for now I'm just using Legos designs pretty much, which is good, but not exactly what I'm going for. I'm excited to change that at some point in the future. And again, just a few little moments over here, a little guy shearing some ferns. Maybe I should put a different character here because a knight just going out shearing stuff is kind of weird. Just Steve chopping down a tree, and I liked what I did here with the sheep eating the grass because if I just had a dirt block in the floor and a sheep standing over it, that might look weird because I can't make sh sheeps tilt their head down. But with something like this, it makes it look a lot like the sheeps actually eat in the grass and turned it into dirt, which I thought was fun. And this is yet another way I'm trying to make a game accurate is animals and even mobs spawn in herds in the game. Uh, it's different for every mob. Like some of them only spawn in herds of one. Some of them it's like two to four. It's, it's a varying amount of numbers. And I don't plan to be exactly accurate with the numbers. Like tropical fish spawn in groups of eight, I believe. I'm not gonna have eight tropical fish in each group, but I'll have a few just to show that, hey, they spawn in groups, not just on their own, because that's not how it works in game. Now, if you're wondering, these pieces here with the flower stud on top, those are meant to be ferns. And of course this is grass. And then over here, these are double tall fur, or not ferns, double tall grass, which is kind of weird because it's the piece I'm using for ferns, but two stacked on top of each other. So you'd think it'd be double ferns, but if I stack two of the grass pieces on top of each other, it doesn't really look like double grass. So I don't know. I feel like there's some solution here that I've got to find. Maybe it's just a color change. Maybe I can use just normal green for the ferns. That's an idea. And then stick with bright green for grass. But I mean, even if I use bright green for double tall grass, then it's like, hold on, you're using just green for the normal grass. So I don't know, it's something I'll have to think about, but I'm not totally happy with it just because it gets kind of weird and confusing. Moving over into the actual village and trading center, we've got a whole bunch of different sets combined in here with a lot of fun moments in here. Uh, we've got a zombie fighting off, or an iron golem fighting off some zombies coming from the dark forest. Someone trying to tame a cat with some fish, a farmer looking over their crops, Alex petting a bunny, Iron Golem giving a rose to the villagers, which is cute. A bunch of stuff going on in the marketplace over here. We've got, as I said, we have tons, we have a ton of different sets included here. We've got the bakery, the illager raid, the llama village, the village, the trading outpost, and the crafting box 3.0. This isn't actually a thing in the crafting box 3.0. I just built it using mostly pieces from that set. It's also kind of a way for me to just get rid of my excess TNT because you collect a lot of that when building Lego Minecraft and I kind of wanted to do something with it. You got little explodey creeper guy here being like, hey, hey, I'ma light it up. And then I gotta turn the camera upside down for this, but she's like, no, don't do that. That's gonna blow everything up, which I think is a fun little moment. Again, all these fun little moments, like back here, you've got a zombie villager coming after a villager. You've got a back alley snowball deal. <laughs> And then over here, I think this part is so cute. It's just a little park area with a bunch of flowers and baby animals. And Steve and Alex are sitting on their little chairs. I just, I just think this is so freaking cute. 
And you might remember me mentioning last year that when I build something, I kind of associate it with whatever I was watching at the time of building it. Well, both while building this cute, wholesome park and while building the uh, back alley snowball deal, I was watching the same Melon's, I believe, Ace Attorney stream. So these two kind of are connected in my head in that way, despite them being very different in vibe. Uh, these oak trees are just Lego design for oak trees. Once again, I will get my own design at some point. Boom, Wandering Trader was there, Wandering Trader isn't there anymore. Boom, it wandered off. Yep, that's a fun thing you can do, is take off the trader stand and you can't move- I was about to say you can move it elsewhere, but no, you most certainly cannot do that just yet, but I will probably one in each section, but we'll wait to see that for sure. But I will have multiple uh, places in each section of the world for the wandering trader stand to go, because they're wandering around selling their wares, which I think is a really fun detail. Now, uh, the village as a whole does need some updating. These houses, I will make them all 114 houses. At some point, I haven't done that yet, but I'll do it at some point. Uh, the castle may look good right here, but structurally it's a bit unstable. It uses some, not actual Lego, some really old discolored bricks. It's, it definitely needs some changes, so I'll get around to that at some point as well. Uh, I've also got to build interiors for the village houses. I do want to, I do have uh, the, you have the ability to take off certain bits of ground and open up the houses. Should probably mention that the ground being removable is relevant because the village houses hinge open. But there's nothing much in there, so I will add some more interesting stuff in those houses at some point. Uh, back behind here, you do have a little back alley fight club, which I thought was super fun. You got everyone on the side cheering them on. You got the bouncer who's like, nah, man, you can't come in. He's like, oh, come on, let me in. But nope, you don't have your license or whatever you need to get in there. That used up a lot of minifigs. I've used up a lot of minifigs as a whole in this section of the world. But especially back here, I thought I had more figures than I knew what to do with but I actually had very few left after I was done with this. The village also marks pretty much my first time using, at least first time since learning the term, using snot bricks. And it's very, very simple uses, just putting some hay bales sideways, uh, putting the trap doors on the side of the flower bed here and the water trough over there. I know it's very, very simple, but I'm quite happy to finally be using that technique. And now we've got the last sort of area in this section, and that's the defense of the village with a raid coming at it. We've got the fortress set here, fairly unchanged from how it usually is. Just, I put a, I made a slightly bigger, more interesting campfire. Steve's over here mounting his steed to go fight the raid outside. There are a whole bunch of pillagers. <clears throat> I would definitely like a few more. I'd like another Vindicator or two in the Woodland Mansion as well. And I've just realized uh, Lego has yet to make an Evoker figure. I do wonder if we'll ever get that in a- we've got two set- we've had one set that's like a full-on raid, and one that's just a raid patrol. I mean, I guess Evokers don't spawn in those. But if we get another, like, raid on the Snowy Village or whatever set, then I would love to see an evoker in that, and maybe a witch, so those are a little more common, because I would not mind getting another witch. But regardless, I've worked with the figures I have here, and I've made a fun little raid with a bunch of little mini battles and stuff going on here. Uh, I'd love to have some pillagers over here, um, attacking the desert outpost as well, but literally they don't have enough, so it's just some skeletons for now. And the outpost is ex expanded out here, protecting the village with a wall. However, if you want to change things up a bit, you can. Boom, desert outpost retracted. Re 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 retracted. You can do that. Yep, that's a thing you can do. I think that's pretty cool. In the original set, you were able to hinge the outpost outwards. Uh, what I've got here is just you can take a bunch of sections off uh, and break it like that. That's cool. That's not what I meant to do. Ooh, uh, it took a while to engineer this so that all the sections fit together in the different ways that you can unfold it, in different ways as in two, you can have it folded and unfolded. I think that's pretty cool though, you can have a path into the village or a wall extended outwards protecting it. I do think it'd be fun to act, like if I bring this to a convention someday, just change the way that it's shaped throughout the day just to make it a bit interesting. If people pass by the table a second time, it's like, hey, that's new. Uh, kind of similar to what I'm doing with the trading outpost over there. I think little things like that make the world new and interesting and interactable. Uh, also, if I do bring this to conventions, uh, I think I'm gonna have a treasure hunt of 12 Eyes of Ender scattered throughout the world. That's something I've not really done much with yet, but that and potentially some other hide and, or not hide and seek, some other potential like treasure hunt stuff and something like that. Experiment with something like that. 
Uh, I don't know exactly what, but it's just some ideas that I have. Something I have made an effort to do with this edition of the Minecraft world is to smooth out the front here so it's all bricks, so it looks all nice and whatnot, which I really like. And I did just realize, should I make, should I make this stuff under here tan and not blue? I think I should do that because that doesn't make any sense. Oh, dang it. I'm gonna have to do that at some point. And the final little part of this section of the world is just this bit of desert over here. Obviously, not much. You've just got Steve with a little cactus in his hand, digging up some sand. You've got a rabbit that I know that isn't a tan rabbit. And it should be tan because that's way more accurate to the color of desert rabbits. But that rabbit only came in the recently released Badlands Mineshaft, which I don't have yet. I will put it around here when I do get it. But for now, we're just using the dark tan rabbit. And the Badlands Mineshaft will pretty much replace this jank mess that I built a while ago. Uh, I was just kind of slapping bricks together, not thinking about it too hard, and it was fine. Now, I have kind of taken it apart because I needed some of the pieces from it, so it's a little less fine now, but it was fine when it was all together, but even still, I know I can do a lot better, and I definitely think I have with this first section of the third edition of the LEGO Minecraft World. I have put a lot more thought into it, uh, a lot more skill. I'm using snot bricks, even very, very minor ways. I am still using them, which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, underneath, it's a lot more stable. Like if I just press down over here, it's not gonna collapse in on itself. No, it's fine. It's not gonna do that. Uh, underneath, it was just way, I was using very few pieces, but I'm not that, I don't have like an infinite amount of pieces, but I don't, I'm not that low that I need to be super conservative with them and build it sparely structurally stable. No, this is very well put together, but I've also made sure to build it in, a, in just such a way so that if I need to take it apart and move it in sections, like when I moved into this room, I can do that. Or if I need to bring it to a convention, that is something that's very doable. This edition of the world is definitely defined by putting that kind of effort in to, uh, putting that kind of effort in to truly make it something great and doing a lot more original stuff outside of just putting some bricks in between all the official sets making my own design for dark oak trees, expanding upon Lego's designs for big mushrooms, making my own little buildings like this, updating the village set, which I'll do eventually. This cute little scene that I just want to point out again, and I think one of the real defining features is, of this world is just those little moments. Just this person leading some chickens along with seeds, uh, this guy trying to tame a cat, and all that stuff we've gone over. I really like those small little Minecraft moments. Plus the original stuff you don't really find in Minecraft, like a fight club over here, here, or sitting on the bench holding hands like that. Or the dead guy in here. We don't need to, we don't need to talk about that. That my lawyer specifically said not to mention that, so forget I forgot I said anything! And one more notable thing I'm doing is the water. If you compare this water to the water in any LEGO Minecraft set, it is way more game accurate because it's just below the level of where the land is rather than way below it. And I get it's a million times easier to put it way below like LEGO does, and I'm totally fine with them doing that. But it is worth it to do this just because it looks so much better. And it does, it does eat up a lot of pieces. Like I can confirm Lego is completely okay for doing the water the way they do it. Cause it takes a lot of pieces to do it this way, but I love the way it looks. So it's absolutely worth it. And also I changed up this explosion a bit. So I guess I should show it to you guys. If Alex shoves TNT down there, boom. Voila, blah, much bigger than your average explosion from a Lego Minecraft set. I am trying to really just upgrade Lego's official sets. I think that's another way to look at what a lot of what I've done here is just upgrade them. Instead of just four blocks flying about, it's an actual chunk of land that's a lot more accurate to what a creeper might really blow up in game. I've also got my own designs for all the flowers, as I might have mentioned earlier. I'll probably make some videos specifically showcasing all of them in the future. You've got like Zur Bleuet, however you pronounce that one, it's like French or something. You got poppies, dandelions, lily of the valleys. Those white pieces are like $4 on Bricklink, fun fact. Here's a little, here's a little fun fact about this. I was very surprised to find, uh, here, there's one up here I can pick a lot easier. Uh, these four petal flower pieces, they were discontinued several years ago. And surprisingly in white, they only ever showed up in a couple of like Belleville sets and things like that. Please focus, please. I would really appreciate if you did that. Please, please. Not very good at this. 
Okay, it got dark for some reason, but that works. They showed up in, like, a couple of Belleville sets and stuff like that in the early 2000s. And I mean, like, uh, six or something like that. And then never showed up again for, like, 15 years until the Waterfall base in 2017, which, including extra pieces, I believe came with three of them. And because I got that set, I have three of these flower pieces, and now they've totally discontinued this piece in white and all other colors. So, yeah, that'll get you a good few dollars on Bricklink, despite how you'd think it'd be fairly common. Now, without further ado, I think it's about time we take a look at the future direction of the LEGO Minecraft world. I want to mention real quick, since it's relevant to the village we just covered, that over here is going to be the Pillager Outpost set. I've just temporarily put all this stuff onto a random sand plate I had, but it'll go somewhere around here, and usually the set takes place in the plains, but it's going to be in the desert, just because I I think it's kind of fun to change the biome of sets. Like this one, I made Dark Oak Forest, even though it originally isn't. And I figured, hey, I need more stuff to populate the desert. There's not a lot of desert sets. Let's put the Pillager Outpost here. Then it's going to be somewhat close to the village, which is how things are in game. I believe that Pillager Outposts can only spawn within 100 blocks of villages, so that makes sense. I think it's a really fun, clever idea. But the main thing I want to talk about when it comes to the future of the LEGO Minecraft world is over here. This is the next section I will be working on, and I have already placed my Bricklink order for it. Uh, I do want to say this whole sections thing has really helped me stay a lot more focused and organized and set clear goals. Like, I know this is what it is that I am working on. This is why I have these pieces. Let's do this. I was so all over the place in the past, but now it's like this section is what I'm doing. I have an idea of what order I'm going to work on the sections going forward, but that is not set in stone. I don't want to make any promises. And regardless, this ocean and swamp is going to take me a while. Uh, for now, the only Bricklink order I've made is for the swamp and Mushroom Island, which I should probably mention, there's a line about here and everything inside of it is gonna be ocean. Everything else is going to be raised up to the same level as the rest of the tables. So the swamp's gonna go about here along with a mangrove swamp. I'm excited for that. There's gonna be an iceberg right about there. I'm aware that this is just the icy peak set, but that's just temporary to help me visualize it. It's gonna be an iceberg. And then over here is the mushroom island. The mushroom island is gonna use medium lavender for mycelium, while <clears throat> the mangrove swamp uses dark blue for mud. But both of those are colors I have not really worked with before, so I'm excited about that. That's very, very new to me. I'm very used to tan and reddish brown and light bluish gray and all those other main Minecraft colors. So I'm gonna be, I'm really excited for this. The swamp, despite only having two sets that take place in the swamp, and honestly, I might part out the mushroom house. We'll see how that goes. But despite there only being two that take place in the swamp, I'm giving it a fair amount of real estate here because I think it's a very cool biome. And then once I'm done with that, I will move over to the ocean down here, which I'm also pretty, I mean, I'm pretty excited for all this, but I've got just kind of a little demo of how the ocean might end up looking here. And I'm loving it. I've still got to decide on designs for like coral fans and actual coral and all of that. That's something I'm very much thinking through. But this little demo that I have here of kind of a little bit of what it might look like is already making me really excited to work on it. And I am pumped for those Bricklink orders to get in soon. Okay, I lied. There's more than two sets that take place in the swamp, but this one's just a tiny bit of terrain and it's just gonna get parted out and the pumpkin house sucks, so I don't count it anyway. And that is going to be it for the first full-on LEGO Minecraft world update tour. It feels great to just, just say that, boom, this section is quote unquote at least done. It is amazing. I have really settled into my own style here. Here, just like making my own custom designs for things, being consistent with stuff, making sure it's all structurally stable. Uh, I'm definitely showing that I've improved as a builder since the previous two editions, which I absolutely love to see. And I am really excited for the future of the world and to build up that ocean and swamp soon. Might be a Lego build and chill stream or something about that. Who knows? There will of course be a Bricklink order video up soon about the pieces I'm getting for that that section. And I did actually submit this section of the world to a convention. Unfortunately, they did not respond, but who knows? Maybe next time I apply to a convention, I will get accepted. So stay tuned for that. Follow my Twitter and maybe even my Instagram if you want to get updates on stuff like that, because that is where you will be notified if I do get accepted. But for now, gamers, this has been Flame and Gaming 7. Make sure to like and subscribe, and remember, kids, eat your green vegetables. It definitely wasn't the best thing ever built, but I was a kid, and I was having fun, and that's all that matters.
I don't know where I'm going with this. It was not the most impressive thing ever, but I was a kid and I was having fun and it wasn't terrible, honestly, and I enjoyed it. I said that twice. I said that I was having fun twice.